All right, so the weigh-ins for UFC 298, they just finished a couple of hours ago. I just finished from the UFC weigh-in show. I've just driven home and there's been a bit of a shake-up with the fight card. One of the fights has changed. One fighter has withdrawn, okay? There's a new fight on deck, but fear not. Of course, the main event is still in place, okay? Alexander Volkanovsky will still be taking on Ilya Taporia, okay? That's the main event. That's the main thing that we're concerned about, that we're worried about. And it's an incredible fight. Taporia, this man is on a mission. He firmly believes he's going to knock out Volkanovsky in round one, which is crazy, right? Is old Volkanovsky too old? Is he, is he past his best? Past the sell-by date? Has his chin expired? Did Islam knock it out of him? I don't think so. I'm not sure if uh, Taporia does it in round one, but I do know that this is going to be a fantastic fight. Fortunately, the cold main event is still on as well. Robert Whittaker taking on Secret Juice, Paolo Costa. I could go through the entire fight card like this, but I'm not going to do that. I'm not a prick. I'm just going to tell you right now. On the ESPN prelims, we had Marcos Rogério de Lima, the Brazilian heavyweight, a big old boy with some big power in his hands and excellent jiu-jitsu. He was taking on Australia's Justin Taffer, and that was going to be a brilliant matchup because two big guys, knockout power, Justin Taffer is a bad man by name and by nature, but unfortunately, because of an undisclosed injury, he has had to withdraw from the fight. So I was doing a live weighing show with Dan Helly, Laura Sanko, and King Bobby Green. And uh, as it was about to wrap up, they're like, oh no, we've got a fight change. We've got a fight cancelled because of Junior Taffer. But... There's another heavyweight on deck who is licensed, who is ready to go, who is fighting in just a few weeks. And that, of course, turned out to be Justin Taffer's little brother, Junior Taffer. That is correct. The brother that was helping Justin Taffer get ready for Marcos Rogerio de Lima, who was in Anaheim, California, just down the street from me for UFC 298, part of the training camp, right? So he knows De, de Lima very well because he's been helping his brother prepare. His older brother had to withdraw from the fight. We don't know what the injury is, and that's a shame. But fortunately, the fight's still taking place. So we haven't lost the fight on UFC 298, but we have had a switch up. But from the viewpoint of Marcos Rogerio de Lima, nothing changes, okay? Because Justin Taffer, Junior Taffer, they're both big boys, they're both Australians, they're both heavyweights, and they're both kickboxers. Junior Taffer, I think he's 5-1 in mixed martial arts. And he's had about 17 professional kickboxing or tie boxing fights. So that fight, look, listen, different first name, same last name, essentially the same fight for the fans. Good news is all the fights on the main card, they're still ready to rock. And rock they will. Anthony Hernandez versus Kopolov. That's going to be a sensational fight to start the card. We haven't been talking about that one too much. I haven't really covered that. Roman Kopolov, beautiful kickboxing. Anthony Hernandez, decent on the feet, but... Very, very skilled grappler. I'll never forget when he choked out Rodolfo Vieira. Something like a seven-time jiu-jitsu world champion. Beat him at his own game. So that's great. Sahudo Marabdavalishvili. Is this the beginning of the end for Henry Sahudo? He says that if he loses, he's going to retire. And that's it. It's all over, right? And it just might be because Marabdavalishvili will not stop coming forward. And he can probably match him in the wrestling department. So that's sensational. And Jeff Neal versus Ian Machado. Gary... Ian Gary's got a lot of pressure on his shoulders, right? He's going to go out there and try and silence the critics. Is that even possible? There's a lot of critics out there and they are very vocal. They are very loud. Being silenced is going to be hard. The best thing for Ian Gary is to go out there, beat Jeff Neal on the feet because I don't think he's going to take him down and beat him via jiu-jitsu, even though he has been training down in Brazil with the legendary shooter box, right? If he beats him, he beats him on the feet. And then when he gets on the microphone... He's got to try and be humble. I'm not saying reinvent himself, okay? I'm just saying don't lean into it because at this moment in time, the noise surrounding Ian Gary is deafening and it's not in a good way. It's just pure negativity and hatred. And I'll tell you what, fair play to the man because he's mentally strong walking out there in front of 20,000 people that are all going to be booing him. At the Waynes yesterday... There was a lot of noise and it wasn't a good type, okay? So he's going to harness the good energy, block the bad. There isn't very much good energy, but there's a lot of bad energy to block, okay? But seriously, yeah. back in the day, people <laughs> hated me, right? 
What do you think you got to do to try and win them over? And I know consciously you're not trying to do that. You're just being exactly. yourself. But what do you think it's going to take? The truth is, I'm not trying to win anyone over. If they love me or hate me because of my performances, then fine, do you. At the end of the day, this is the fight game. And if my fighting does the talking and I go out there and I keep doing what I've doing, which is every single time get my hand raised, then the fans are just going to keep moaning about stuff that's completely and utterly irrelevant. My hand will get raised, I'll stay undefeated. They can talk their shit, they can do all they want. I'm winning. So fair play to both of those guys, but I do believe that's going to be a potential choice for fight of the night. Jeff Neal brings it, man, and he hits fucking hard, okay? He really does. Amazing boxing. Started off as a kickboxer, though, but by the way, and he can wrestle as well. And I don't think we're going to see too much wrestling, but the power in the hands is phenomenal. Co-main event, Paolo Costa versus Robert Whittaker, right? Robert Whittaker is a man on a mission. He's pissed off. He's angry. I did an interview the other day. I thought he was going to slap me in the face, right? He's just zoned in. He's dialed in. He's locked in to Paolo Costa. He's bringing pure aggression, okay? Skill for skill, pound for pound, Robert Whittaker is one of the best. The way that he mixes things up is just phenomenal, okay? Great fight. And then, of course, Volkanovski taking on Taporia. That's going to be brilliant. Because when you look at UFC fighters, somebody like Alexander Volkanovski, that's an alpha male. That's a world champion that steps in there and fights in this kind of environment. You think, wow, they're going to be so tough. They've got to be so mentally strong. And, you know, to see them be so open with their feelings and their emotions and, and, and revealing that they are vulnerable and they do have mental health kind of issues here and there will help them to confront their own issues because the, there's still this stigmatism that it's weak, you know, that you're a that you shouldn't think about that stuff, that you've got to man up and just get on with it, you know? And the, the sad stat is that a lot of people still commit suicide and mm -hmm. because they don't feel comfortable talking about it. Seeing somebody like Volkanovsky being so honest will help them come forward. Go talk to somebody. Talk to somebody because, listen, it's a real thing. Is it the first ever Spanish champion, Spanish slash Georgian champion? And he was born in Germany. He's claiming three countries. No, he's not. He's claiming two. Um, you never know. You never know. Big, big pressure on every single person. As I say, I just did the UFC 298 official weighing show from the Honda Center where the fights are going to go down. And we had a few stupid little games. They were forcing us to down red wine, okay? Um, I downed a glass of red wine in 0 0.28 seconds. By far, won the game. One. Hey! hey, 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 hey. Good God. I told you, this guy, you gotta watch this guy. One, <laughs> two, three. Biz, biz, good God. <laughs> yeah! Wow. Are you intoxicated? I don't know if that's a skill I should be proud of, okay? Uh, but still, there it is. We had to play some stupid games. They pinned a load of like clothes pegs to us and we all had to shake them off. And I was just like, I'm not doing it. <laughs> I'm not doing it. Laura Sanko, she is competitive. She was shaking and jibbering and jiving all over the bloody place. Dan Helly got involved. Bobby Green, you know, he is too cool for school. He's one cool motherfucker. But he got involved as well. And I just stood there thinking, I can't do this. I'm 45 years old almost, you know what I mean? I just can't do it. So I said, sorry, i got to bow out. But I did eat a lot of ice cream. What else did I have? I ate a lot of uh, breakfast muffins. I had some... McDonald's style, you know, chicken and sausage and egg McMuffins. Um, and I downed some wine and slipped on a Bud Light. So all in all, a great day's work. Wow. I knew one day being a drunk. I got wine in my nose. No. And I'm good to be back. Glad to be home. Got to do a bit more research before the big fights tomorrow night, right? I'm excited for this card. It's going to be fantastic from top to bottom. But who wins? Volkanovski, right? He is... So sure that he's going to win. And so is Taporia. And that's what makes this fight so special. When you look at Taporia, perhaps the confidence is borderline arrogance. But I don't think it's arrogance. He's been doing Greco-Roman wrestling since he was four years old. The striking is phenomenal. The boxing is some of the best we've seen in the UFC. But, but Volkanovski has been able to deal with these guys and push back number one contenders time after time after time. But Taporia is the first time in the UFC that he's taking on somebody undefeated. So it's a new test, another puzzle to crack, okay? Another skull to crack. And Taporia has never been beaten, never been knocked out, never been TKO'd, never been dropped. He's the full package, the real deal, and he can't wait to get a feel on the one and only Alexander Volkanovsky. But still, I've been rambling, and that's it. New fight on deck.
Marcos Ruggiero de Lima taking on the younger brother of Justin Taffer, Junior Taffer. Respect to both men for accepting that on such short notice. And respect to you for watching this video, supporting the YouTube channel. And if you haven't already subscribed and rang the bell, then what the bloody hell are you waiting for? Do that, and I'll see you tomorrow with another video. I'll be live on air calling the fights with Joe Rogan and the GOAT, John Anik, and I'll be doing a post-fight instant reaction straight away, so make sure you come back for that one. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you soon.